Dear Professor. Dear Professor. Dear, dear, dear professor. professor. Dear Professor. We are a diverse group of non-Black scholars, and we invite you into dialogue to interrogate our research and pedagogy in support of Black lives. As a group of learning scientists, we want to share our knowledge and offer strategies to strengthen our teaching with theories, research, and concrete actions from the learning sciences to disrupt anti-Blackness. We conceptualize anti-Blackness as structures and individuals that deny status and rights to Black people and denigrate, harm, and kill Black people, as well as profit from the labor and talents of Black people. To name some concrete ways anti-Blackness manifests in society, we see it in housing discrimination, the criminal justice system, the disproportionate negative impact of climate change on Black communities, the healthcare system, the organization of school funding and curriculum, and holding Black students to a more punitive standard of discipline in schools, often with long-term consequences for their futures. We recognize that Black scholars are often called on to educate non-Black scholars on anti-Blackness often without recognition or honoring of their perspectives and experience. And we do not want to burden them any further. So we are modeling the distribution of this labor as non-Black scholars deeply invested in this collective struggle. We are all learning to do this work. It's ongoing and it's hard. Have compassion for yourselves and each other as we move to confront anti-Blackness within and across academic fields. We have three points we want to share with you. First, cite and study the work of Black scholars. Second, see, care for, and learn with and from Black students. And third, critically reflect on your own teaching and research practices so you can improve them. First, drawing on the work of Black scholars who have studied and embodied anti-racist pedagogies, we share themes that cut across much of this work and encourage you to engage in further study of their research. Key themes that have guided our thinking include acknowledging that knowledge production and learning are political, historical, embodied, and culturally situated. All of us experience learning in ways that are deeply shaped by our intersectional identities. There is generative power in building on people's experiences of learning both in and outside of the classroom. Joining in and supporting collective organizing is a form of learning that can promote justice in communities. Anti-racist learning is ongoing and allows for collective dreaming towards multiple possible futures. And in designing and studying learning, engaging in participatory design with Black, Indigenous, and other communities of color can privilege their experiences of learning. Second, we must remember the Black students in our classes. As educators, we must continually identify and disrupt the primarily white narratives that have historically characterized collegiate disciplines and K-12 curricula. We need to develop ways to expand how our Black students are welcomed and represented in our classes. As we consider their participation in our courses, we must remember that the Black community is richly diverse and that not one student can speak for the entirety of Black people. Often. In our attempts to leverage the expertise of our learning communities, we relegate responsibilities to our students of color, especially in discussions that burden them with the labor of both defining oppression and or ratifying attempts at countering this oppression. We must remind ourselves that it is not our black students' responsibility to guide us in these processes, and that placing such responsibility is not only labor intensive, but can also be violent. Instead of scholars driven by an impetus to co-design learning environments with our students, we ask, how can the labor of gathering stories, defining oppression, and imagining new futures be distributed more intentionally amongst members of our learning communities? Third, we offer these reflective questions as a call to action for our next steps in disrupting anti-Blackness in the academy. We draw on the scholarship of Dr. Valentina Iturbe Lagrave to guide our journey. First, how has your academic discipline explicitly and implicitly reified anti-Blackness? This question invites 
exploration of history and the ways in which the past still animates our present orientations to our scholarship and how we teach content from our areas of expertise. For example, if the history of your field was created in institutions of higher education over the past 100 years, and these spaces were or are not inclusive of black scholarship, then teaching the history of ideas in your field is not neutral. How have black scholars worked to disrupt racist notions within our fields and where is their work in our syllabi? How, if at all, have you infused notions of diversity, equity, justice, or anti-racism in your course? Even if your course might seemingly cover neutral or objective topics, anti-blackness is ubiquitous once we actively engage in noticing. Take, for example, how Joy Willemwini founded Algorithmic Justice League after seeing that facial recognition software failed to see black people as humans. Even in a discipline as objective as computer science, racism and anti-blackness shape the contours of coding because of the human beings who create artificial intelligence and unintentionally recreate racism in digital platforms. In universities, we all talk about learning. One might assume that we share a definition of what learning means. However, without a critical eye, learning can be often equated with test scores, being able to reproduce memorized content, or sitting quietly and listening. Thus, learning can become a performative act that does not align with sense-making, developing an identity as a member of a community, or creating new ways of knowing and being with other people. Conflating learning with behavior contributes to the bias of the interpretation of whose bodies, for example, are sitting quietly and whose bodies are being disruptive. The deaths of black people because of misperception and assumptions has demonstrated too many times how evaluation lands differently and more violently on black bodies. In classrooms, we see this in the disproportionate rates of suspensions. Additionally, who we judge as capable and who we judge as smart stems from a racist history of eugenics that shaped tropes around race and intelligence. We must educate ourselves and our understandings of learning and its connections to anti-blackness so that we can intentionally counter anti-blackness in our learning environments. In what ways can you infuse anti-racist assessment in your course? As discussed in creating effective and equitable assessment from the Chronicle of Higher Education, the traumas of COVID-19, racial reckonings, and climate change incite a moral imperative for educators to reframe assessment as a way to understand how trauma impacts our students and how we can deliver inclusive pedagogies. Some examples include facilitating an activity called, How Are You Feeling?, using a critical incident questionnaire, and exploring strategies for inclusive assessment to check in with students and to develop relationships that contribute to their healing and learning. As we move to transform assessment, we must shift its purpose from reinforcing racial hierarchies and pivot toward critical care so that we're using assessment as a way to build relationships of solidarity with our students. In addition to challenging our in-class pedagogies, we call for each of us in our various leadership positions to take responsibility for creating safe environments for Black scholars to share their ideas in teaching and public scholarship without the threat to their flourishing. It's not enough to try to be inclusive without working to create better university environments, both for students and for scholars. Thank you for joining us and the hashtag Scholar Strikes and our collective work to support Black Lives.